In this video, we're going to demonstrate how you can plot the efficient frontier using the values that we created in our previous video, which were each of the portfolios that actually comprise that frontier. So what we remember from before is that we've got our minimum variance and our optimal risky portfolio, our two key points, and then a whole lot of intermediary portfolios through which that frontier passes. In these highlighted cells here, these are the, the weights of each of those assets within the portfolios. I've got the mean return of each portfolio, the standard deviation of each of those portfolios, and the slope or sharp ratios for each of those portfolios. So in order to uh, calculate my efficient frontier, first of all, we know that uh, we've got a, a, a diagram over here where we've got uh, two axes on my x-axis along the bottom here. I've got my uh, standard deviation of returns. And on my y-axis up here, I've got my expected return value. So basically, in order to plot my efficient frontier, I just need to plot uh, the xy scatter plot that um, enables me to identify those two points. Okay, so I'm going to add a new series, and I'm going to call the series name the efficient frontier. So because my x-axis uh, on one of these diagrams, it's the risk return trader, because my x-axis is standard deviation of returns, okay, I want my x values to be the standard deviations of those values on the efficient frontier. And because my y values expected returns, I want my y to be the commensurate uh, values of expected returns. I'm going to click OK. I'll just click out of that for a moment. And what you can see here is I've actually constructed that efficient frontier once again as before. Now what we know with the efficient frontier as well is it goes hand in hand with the capital allocation line because this is the efficient frontier of my feasible set of risky assets. And in this particular question, I had constrained my feasible set of risky assets to just comprise those seven stocks. So these are the optimal combination of those seven risky assets. But this is a security selection decision. So this is saying this is the optimal combination of security selection decisions that you can make. I then want to overlay that with my asset allocation decision. Recall from earlier, in my asset allocation decision, I combine my risky portfolio with a risk-free rate of interest. And I uh, move along the, the relative weightings in those two different portfolios uh, along what's called my capital allocation line. So I also here want to plot my capital allocation line. So I'm going to select data again and add a new uh, value. I'm going to call it the capital allocation line. Whoops, sorry capital allocation line and I want my capital allocation line once again the X values are going to be my standard deviation of returns along here and my Y values are going to be the expected returns along that capital allocation line now I don't actually have those um, those values at the moment. I'm going to actually create them. So I'm going to put in this um, this series here. And what I should note with my standard deviation, that actually needs to start at zero because my capital allocation line will start at zero at the risk-free portfolio. So I'm going right back to zero for that one. Um, and just to do that again, back to zero, getting that full value there. Okay. Now at the moment, it's not going to plot anything because I don't have any values along the bottom here. So what is my capital allocation line? Well, first of all, we know it starts at the risk-free rate. And then it's a straight line that moves from the risk-free rate onwards. So when standard deviation is zero, obviously my capital allocation line goes through 0.05, that risk-free rate. Moving onwards from there, my value of each capital allocation uh, line point is 0.05, which is the risk-free rate of return, plus the standard deviation of returns for each particular point times the slope of the capital allocation line. Now what we learned in previous classes is the slope of the capital allocation line is actually the sharp ratio of our optimal risky portfolio. The sharp ratio of that optimal risky portfolio is actually this value, cell H38. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to absolute reference that by clicking F4 because for each point along here the slope is always going to be the slope uh, derived from the, the sharp ratio of that optimal risky portfolio, and that slope is then going to multiply by the respective standard deviation of returns. Okay, so uh, at this particular point here, uh, we've got 
uh, for a standard deviation of 0.1885, my capital allocation line has an expected return of 0 0.0851. Okay, I can then drag that formula across because of how I've constructed it. And you can see from before my diagram now, it, it calculates for me that uh, capital allocation line. Whereby these values here are all expected return values that can be uh, come about that equate to uh, the standard deviations of returns here. And we can generate these expected returns by combining our optimal risky portfolio with our risk-free rate of interest. Okay, so there we have uh, our theoretical security selection, which is our efficient frontier, and our theoretical asset allocation, which is our capital allocation line, uh, both plotted on a graph for us. Thank you for listening.